Welcome into the Australia Galicia post show. A massive day of competition here in Edisada. 20 heats run and whew, loads of entertainment, loads of action, loads of great talking points here at this famous wave in Portugal at such a crunch time in the season. Here to talk you through the post show, joining myself, Paul Evans, Flick Palmateer, Chico Alves. Guys, loads of talking points before we get to that on an emotional level. How are we feeling? How are we bearing up? <laughs> out of 10. I'm, I'm at an 8 out of 10. There was some incredible moments today. Incredibly devastating for some surfers and incredibly happy for others. Chico, your thoughts on a big day, mate? I know you, you like to do long days and hard work. You really get your back into it. Do you enjoy yourself today calling this? <laughs> I just love to call all the tides here. I love the low tide, the mid tide and the high tide. We got it all and it was great to watch surfers perform in uh, all of the tides today. Well, we've talked about it and at this stage in competition, obviously you can't win the event in the opening rounds, but if you're a surfer in contention there or thereabouts, what you don't want to do is lose out today. And we did see some heartbreak from some surfers and it just goes to show how high the stakes are here, Flick. Oh, the stakes are so high and uh, you're only advancing if you're in that first or second position. And uh, we sent home some big names today. So, yeah, massive day of competition and, yeah, some really, really big upsets. All right. Well, one of those came. Let's check out heat number 11 and see exactly what went down in that one. But one of our young surfers out of Brazil, Ryan Kainalo, a lot of heat on him for performances he's able to put down. And coming up against some of the big dogs and this was something of an upset here as we saw Cola Pinto eliminated in this one. Cowley Vast looked pretty solid. Yeah, Cowley looked so solid on his backhand here. I just really liked his approach um, to surfing this wave. He never went too low on his bottom turns on the backhand, which really allowed him to get nice projection out of the lip there. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, we saw uh, Crosby eliminated from this heat. So big, big upset there. He was sitting third on the rankings prior to this event starting. So that's going to be a big loss for him. I'm sure he would have wanted to uh, consolidate on his results here and uh, improve. But yeah, just no match for uh, Cowley, just looking so strong. And yet yeah, all came down, I guess, to uh, you know that final exchange with uh, Ryan Kainalo, just absolutely with a clutch performance. Yeah, Kainalo with this wave, uh, throwing buckets of water and surfing really aggressive. Throwing the fins on every maneuver and finishing it off really strong uh, to just perform on a clutch situation. Here we saw the Brazilians uh, getting psyched around Canalo and what a moment. Yeah, extra drama in that as well. The fact that we've seen surfers chasing down scores maybe in the sixes or the fives. He needed to go in the excellent range. That's exactly what it did. Heartbreak there for Crosby Cola Pinto who realizes various permutations mathematically what could have happened here. Well, he's going to have to go over to Sacarema, Brazil in our final challenge event of the season and try and get it across the line right there. But I'll tell you what, for the neutrals, it was very entertaining indeed. And you've got to love the charge from the young upstarts. There's so much talent in terms of the field out there. And any heat, really, you look and you think, OK, this, this surfer's going really well. This person's informed but I tell you what it's kind of anyone's out of these foursomes any two could go through yeah for sure um when i was in the booth today with miguel and we we're kind of asking you know, a few questions and he just said you know what I, you've got to bring your a game to every single heat because everyone just surfs so good you can't be making those tiny mistakes because someone's there and someone's hungry and they're going to capitalize on it yeah i just feel like Ribera is a wave that um you can have a shocker no matter who you are <laughs> If you don't find the good ones, y you're out. So today was one of those days that Ribeiro showed uh, what, what the wave is up to. And uh, you got to get the good ones. Otherwise, you're not making it. Yeah, that's what we saw today, wasn't it? There's some brutal stuff going down. And in terms of big names in the draw here, people going well. Even people with wins under their belt on the Challenger Series this year. And the drama in the heats, well, that was all of that is uh, some of our talking points we've got in the post show. But before we get down to that, actually, let's go and hear from the winner of the last heat. He's with Joanna Garnell. Yeah, guys, sorry for interrupting, but what a way to end the day. You got a win, you got a beautiful sunset. Tell me all about it. Yeah, it was a nice heat. Uh, it was really hard to see the wave coming, but other than that, the wave was just fun. And uh, yeah, I was stoked to make that heat. It's really hard to make heats here. <laughs> Have you been watching the competition or have you been just focusing on yourself? No, I watch. I watch all day <laughs> since this morning because um, I knew this morning it was high tide and I knew my heat is going to be the last heat of the day. And then it's like, all right, it's going to be similar than this. So just ended up watching the whole comp. Like I watch all heats and then, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and how are you preparing for tomorrow? 
Um, yeah, just taking day by day. Um, I'm staying with uh, Leandro and Lulu. We are having a good time here. And uh, even in, in the worst day, it was the best day, I think, of waves in the other beaches around. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> That's something new that you're working with uh, Leandro Dora. Uh, How has that been working out so far? Yeah, um, I always competed just by myself. And then the end of the last year, I... I went to him and I, I convinced him to, you know, guiding me and uh, he, he's been helping me since since then and uh, yeah, he had some time off after tour and then he's helping me and Lulu here in Portugal is awesome. Well, looking really good. Congratulations. We'll see you in the next round. Thank you. you. Thanks, John. Up Matthias Hurley there. Not overcome with emotion, Ed. but pretty relieved mainly to get through that one. Yeah, look, he didn't actually look that uh, joyful to be <laughs> made in there. Hey, you know? winners. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've seen it I too. Know. But maybe he's just trying to keep a lid on it. He knows that he's got a long journey ahead of him if he wants to be making that uh, finals. So, you know, maybe it's a cool, calm, collected approach. Well, speaking of some of those upsets that we saw today, turn our attentions to Heat 5, and it was murder on the dance floor. If your name's <laughs> Eli Hanneman, because he looked to have this one sewn up. He surfed brilliantly. He was in control, and it all went wrong at the end here, Flick. Yeah, this was uh, one of my favourite moments in terms of drama uh, today. It was just pretty crazy. Uh, we saw Reef Hazelwood get the win here. He had a 7.13. He backed it up with a 6.63 and it was surfing like this on his backhand, just so precise. I really feel like during this heat, um, I was calling, I just feel like his uh, wave selection was on point. Kind of just to echo what you said, you know, it really is uh, wave selection out here on a day like today. Eli was looking really good, all heat, super controlled in, you know, coming off the back of a win at the US Open. Looked like he had this thing signed, Didn't sealed, and delivered. Wrong, right? It looked easy for him, Chico. He was cruising through this. He found the best waves. He, on the waves himself, he was making great decisions. He was in full flow here. What happened? Yeah, I think it comes down to uh, experience. Um, all these mistakes uh, you make throughout your career make you uh, a better competitor. And if you want to make the tour, uh, it's better to make mistakes now than in tour. Uh, on the tour so um, he's going to learn from today and uh, I think he was looking really really good last year he had a bit of a shock a year too in terms of uh, wave selection but this year uh, he was looking way better so he improved a lot he had the win on the US Open and a bit of a mistake when they eat off yeah so this is him just racking up points and looking in complete control along with Hazelwood who looked really good in this one flick I mean Reef just showing us that he can come and perform you mentioned what he can do in the big ways we know all about him as an aerial but just kind of Power surfing using the rally looked great out here. Yeah, he's looking super strong, just absolutely muscling his way through a couple of those bumpy sections on this wave. And yeah, getting the win, just looking very convincing. He seemed pretty stoked in his post heat interview too. So just moving through the rounds and yeah, with surfing like this, uh, I'd be stoked with that too. And it all looked pretty settled. Hanneman looked to be going through in second place and it was just kind of all about bringing a wave in. And suddenly this happened. Just a reminder of the rule after the horn, there is no priority. So closer to the peak there in red, Eli Hanneman, who had priority before but he stood up after the horn, in which case he loses it and he gets slapped with an interference. He loses a score and he is eliminated here. Drama. It was an incredibly, it was an incredible moment. I, I actually didn't know myself until the judges started taking quite a long time to deliberate. I was like, ooh, okay, maybe there's something uh, happened here that I didn't quite get. And sure enough, slapped with an interference and... Uh, yeah, not advancing. It's just so upsetting coming off the back of a win at the US Open. So all part of the drama here in Erisera. Of course, surfers aren't able to make it through. They'll be kicking themselves. They can't get a chance to go again in Sakurama. But meanwhile, of all the performances we saw today, let's turn our attention to EDP Wave of the Day. And Kai Pooler isn't someone that we know loads about previously on the Challenger Series. I tell you what, he stepped right up here, Chico. Yeah, he's training with Tomas Fernandes that lives um, here um, in Irisera, one of the best uh, over here. So maybe a bit of uh, inside advice for Kai Paolo. And uh, this was a beautiful uh, wave uh, for Kai. Nice carve off the top, blowing the fins there. Uh, this was just 10 hours ago. So beautiful wave uh, we had this morning and uh, beautiful surfing by Kai. Really well put together wave. This, this wave just kept building and building. And he was uh, just uh, playing away big turns and uh, um, 
throwing uh, the biggest score of the day so far. So uh, good for Kai, and uh, he advanced um, his first seat on the Challenger with in good fashion and uh, with really good surfing. So this wave was at 8.5. EDP wave of the day there for Kai Paula. Absolutely smashed that one in the excellent range. Very impressive indeed. And well, it's been a day of uncovering some impressive talents and showing us what they can do on the waves here. Rabira Dillas, of course, waves the key ingredient in any surf contest. Flick, should we have a look at the forecast? Let's do it. Let's, Let's get into that forecast. Let's check it out see what's going down. Yeah, so we're having a look at the next four days here at Irasira. Tomorrow we are looking at still a, quite a bit of swell, three to four foot. It's going to maintain three to four foot all the way through the day. We're going to have a little bit of side offshore. Got a 12 second period dropping down to 11 seconds. So I think, you know, another good day of competition. Then after that, further on the week, it gets a little bit smaller. But Saturday there again, you can see later on in the waiting period, potentially maybe finals. We could be looking at a bit more swell. So lots on offer uh, throughout the week. And yeah, tomorrow is looking really promising. Yeah, we picked out today and tomorrow as the best looking days of the waiting period. And that looks set from what we can see on the forecast set to deliver. Let's hope that happens, of course, still with today and sticking with all of that drama, that action that went down. Let's get into our top five moments of the day. And on the challenge, series, there's all sorts of storylines and permutations of things going on, but one of them is the young up-and-comers, and particularly the Portuguese wildcards doing well. We'll turn our attention to Nunes and Chavez winning their round 80 heat. This is our first moment of the day. The Portuguese are Chica, and this must fill your heart with pride. Yeah, they are both goofies. Um, I, I saw them growing up, and uh, it's great to see them perform, uh, evolving and uh, um, getting uh, to that point where they, they, are, they start to beat big names. So uh, Joaquim, uh, as I said today, he has won two nationals in a row in Portugal, so he's looking good in form, and he knows this wave really well. He lives here. Martin also, they train together, actually, so... They have uh, similar styles in some ways, uh, and uh, they are both goofies. They know this wave, they have the pace of the wave, and they apply the pressure when they need to. So uh, it's a pleasure to watch them surf, and um, of course, I, I, I'm really proud of them. And um, uh, hopefully, Joaquim can perform more. All right, let's check out our fourth moment, and the big man already qualified for Tour Cole Hausman, just exerting his dominance here, Flick. Yeah, and continuing the dominance. You know, he's already qualified for the championship tour, but thought what was interesting, I listened to his post-seat interview with Joanna, and he said, you know what, the job's not done. I've now re-evaluated my goals, and I want to win uh, the uh, Challenger Series, you know. He's uh, readjusted, reframed, and... Pfft, with surfing like this, he's going to continue to dominate. So looking very, very much on fire. Yeah, looking ominous. He looks comfortable. He is fit and focused. Someone else who was impressive today, the defending champion, Leo Fioravanti. And he didn't have it all his own way in this heat, Chico, but just showing his class, really. Yeah, Leo always show class. Uh, he's a really good competitor. He's really fearless. Uh, he's got a huge belief in himself. He never... Um, He's never going to lose easy, uh, and he, in, in this case, he just he made his comeback wave and he made sure he makes this hit. I know he's surfing on different boards, a bit more uh, volume on his boards, and uh, it was, um, uh, he's trying them out here, so this w it was Jackson Bunch on yeah, a huge air. the buzzer beats up <laughs> for Bunch, and he eliminated Kanoa Igarashi with this. We waited seven or eight minutes after the horn. He is absolutely delighted. Look how much it means to him. And I'm on a right-hand reef point. Hey, the Goofies are going left, and they're boosting. Yeah, I think this wind is perfect for uh, perfect for some for some big airs. And um, yep, local hero Frederik Moraes, not disappointing. Last year he had a shocker, and <laughs> I'm so stoked that he got good waves on this seat because uh, I just feel like Fred is so good out here. The pace that he has on waves, the way he serves, he's carving. It's just like money. So uh, he's got everything to do well here in Portugal, and uh, especially on this wave. So. Uh, Fred putting together uh, a really good eat, and I'm really proud of uh, Federico. I know he needs this uh, result, and uh, it's so good to do well at home needing a result as we see him with a happy smile. Federico Moraes, the pride of Portugal, looking really good so far in this event. It's just one of loads of storylines just on the simmer, just bubbling over here. It's been a really fun day of competition. 
key thoughts, takeaway thoughts from a huge day here in Erisera, Flick? Should we just go to sleep here and then wake <laughs> up for tomorrow morning? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it was, in all seriousness, it was a massive day of competition, but just uh, some really dramatic moments. Um, and, yeah, I was blown away, blown away with the waves too, the wave itself just being so consistent throughout the whole day. And I'm excited. Uh, I'm actually turning my heats, uh, uh, turning my sights to the potential first heat of tomorrow morning. Uh, Jacob Wilcox is sitting in that heat, so I'm excited to watch that. Western he, Australia. Yeah, represent. Chico, thoughts from a big day, mate? Yeah, overall, uh, a lot of good surfing. Uh, I think um, it's always great to have the best surfers in the world in town. Uh, not in my town, but in my country. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's great to watch them surf and uh, to be here commentating was really good. All right, we'll keep the drama going. We're going to be back down here tomorrow morning, 7.45. Call for an 8.05 start. Of course, World Le worldsurfleague.com. We're going to send you out with some highlights. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to beautiful Portugal as we look set to kick off the EDP. Vista Erisera Pro presented by Australia Galicia. Some of the world's very finest contenders from all across the surf world showing up here in Portugal. Yeah, once he, he finds his groove, like on this one, it, it, it's, he's really dangerous here in Cuba de It's this style. It's fast, furious, it's stylish, and a massive 14 point locker, so. 8.5, so beautiful opening carving maneuver there. You sort of put it all on the line and talk about something called flow, you know? Because we have the Portuguese surfer on a nice, no, nice looking wave. Look at this. Right, here we go. Beautiful looking section. And he goes super vertical. Again, really nice release. The tail and hangs on. And he's dialed in here. He's got a really good rhythm. Surfing. This is more traditional surfing from Chavez. Again, yeah, just opening up with a snap, but it sets up stuff. Yeah. There's a nice car. That's one of the more real estate turns we've seen today. Definitely he's trained his backhand. Look at this. Every time he puts the board, the board on the leaf, he's just around the section, straight into a nice look at the pins on the back. Wow. Entertaining surfer right now. A bit more stock stuff for him as he just goes down the line. And he'll look for some steeper action here. Really, that is great surfing <laughs> flick. Look, and Miguel has a goofy, how do you like this action from yeah. Reef Hazelwood? I really like it, like, it looks really strong. Quite sharp and uh, fast there. Here at uh, Fred's 7.83, just some nice big turns, looking so strong. I really love this wave. He's had so much spray in the air there.
This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League. Just a pain.